ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Jake! Now it's the Animal Show! Hello, all you little animals out there. I'm Stinky. And I'm Jake. And today we're going to learn all about snakes from our special guest, the rattlesnake. Well, gee, Jake, snakes crawl on the ground and they're not good at juggling. What else is there to know? Oh, Stinky, snakes are amazing. For instance, do you know how many different kinds of snakes there are? How many? Well, let's see. You've got your rattlesnake, your sidewinder, your horn viper, hornless vipers, and their adders, you know, and this could take crates, a while. Why don't you watch boas, this? Rainbow boas, Madagascar boas. And now it's time for... That's amazing! Today, let's find out which was the largest animal ever swallowed by a snake. Ooh. It wasn't a chicken hawk, was it? No, Armstrong. Oh. This is the African rock python. A snake like this once swallowed a 130-pound impala. Wait a second, Rooney. Impalas are bigger than chicken hawks. Look at this. And since snakes can't chew their food, that python had to swallow that impala whole. How'd he do that? By unhinging his jaw. That's how snakes can eat things bigger than their mouth. Yeah. The incredible impala-eating African rock python. Another animal that makes me real nervous and will make you say... <gasps> That's amazing! Now, where was I? Oh, yes, there, there, there's also the mambas, the asps. Oh, and my all-time favorite, the good old cobra yeah, decapeo. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah, 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 really interesting. Hey, but yeah. did you hear what Bunny said about the snake swallowing the impala? I can't wait to ask the rattlesnake about that. Well, this is your chance, because here she is from the dry, rocky terrain of North America. America! Please welcome Kiki, the rattlesnake. going to get a little respect. I'm tired of animals looking down on us just because we crawl on our bellies. Uh, well, welcome to the show, Kiki. Hey, Kiki, can you swallow an impala? What was that? Stinky was just very impressed by the fact that an African rock python once swallowed a 130-pound impala. Oh, if you think that's impressive, wait till you see what I've got to show you. Oh, oh you got a clip? Oh. Oh Let's boy. start out with my favorite kind of snake. Oh, that looks more like a cactus to me. Have patience. You are about to see the rattlesnake catching some shade in the midday sun. Oh, there he is. That's a western diamondback rattlesnake, isn't it? That's right, Jake. And of all the snakes in all the world, poor rattlers like this one have the worst reputation. Is that because you eat impalas? No, Stinky, we do not eat impalas. We are feared because the venom in our bite is so strong it can kill you. <gasps> but rattlesnakes only use that venom to catch food and to protect yourself. Finally, someone is speaking the truth. You see, Jake, sometimes an eagle or some other animal attacks us. Then we have to use our venom to save our skins. Well, what about humans? Do you ever bite them? Only if they make the mistake of getting too close. By the way, it is a well-known fact that in Mexico, ten times more people die from scorpion stings than from rattlesnake bites. I didn't know that. Well, it's a well-known fact among rattlesnakes. Now, I noticed that snakes always seem to be sticking out their tongues. Yeah, are you giving somebody raspberry? We do that because snakes have a very special kind of tongue. We can use it to smell. That's one way we keep track of what's going on around us. Ah, and that must be your famous rattle. Indeed it is. Gee, I thought only little babies played with rattles. Well, Stinky, ours is a different kind of rattle, and we don't use it to entertain ourselves. Well, what do you use your rattle for? Our rattle is how we warn other animals to stay away. When you're lying as close to the ground as we are, it's easy for other animals to overlook you. With our rattle, we can let animals that might step on us know they had better keep their distance. How do snakes move? You guys don't have any legs. That's right, Stinky. We don't have legs, but we can still cover a lot of ground. Oh. Rattlesnakes move using what's called a serpentine motion. We curve back and forth, then push against the ground with our body. Now, do all snakes move like that? It's certainly the most popular way to get around, but there are other ways. Big snakes usually move like a caterpillar, pushing their whole skin back and forth. And there are other snakes that move like an inchworm, stretching themselves out, then pulling themselves forward. But that pretty much covers it in the snake movement department, right? 
No, no, Stinky. There's one more way we move that I know you're gonna like. Sidewinding. Wow, look at her go! That's a sidewinder rattlesnake. She has to move like that because she lives in the desert. Is there some kind of law? No, she moves that way in the desert because it's tough for a snake to get a grip on the sand. So the sidewinder uses the whole middle part of her body to push forward. That's right. Uh, who's that scary looking snake? Scary? I think he's kind of cute. That's a hornless viper. It's the cousin of a rattlesnake, and it has a poisonous venom just like we do. Well, now, how does a snake get its venom into someone it bites? Fang. You're welcome. I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> you see, Jake, they have sharp, hollow teeth that work like a doctor's needle. When the snake sinks its fangs into the skin, he just pushes the poison through, and that's that. Uh-huh. Now, now tell me, do you bite the Impalas before or after you swallow them whole? What's with him and this Impala? I don't know, but I'm sure we'll find out later in the show. In which case, I'll be back in a bit. As long as you're not back with a bite. Stinky, I want to know why you keep talking about this Impala. Oh, shh, I can't tell you now, Jake. It's time for... Oh, baby, baby talk. talk. <clears throat> Anybody out there? Hey, are you coming out or not? Oh, don't rush me. Wow, cool bubble. Hey, look what I can do. <sighs> okay, be like that. I'm going back in. Wait, I'm coming out now. You sure? Watch this. Whoa, that is so cool. <sighs> and that's not all. Ta-da! <gasps> all right, now tell me, why do you keep asking Kiki about eating an Impala? Well, you'll find out later. <sighs> Who needs legs to get around to get from A to B? Who needs legs to cross the ground or swim across the sea? Who needs legs to cross the sand or even climb a tree? Who needs legs for anything? Not me Who needs legs to get around Across the desert floor A pair of legs however long Don't help much anymore It doesn't take forever To get from door to door We don't need legs for anything That's for sure Reporter getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if this animal knows the answer. Ma'am. Yes. Can you tell me which of the following legless animals is not a snake? I'll give it a try. Is it the African python, the false cobra, the puff adder, or the slow worm? Your answer. It has to be the false cobra, because he's false, right? Am I right or am I right? <laughs> The false cobra is a real snake, but the slow worm is not a snake at all. It's actually a legless lizard. Slow worms are classified as legless lizards and not snakes because unlike snakes, one, they cannot dislocate their jaw, two, they shed their tails, and three, slow worms blink. They are found in most parts of Europe. They shed their skin and scaly covering now and then so that they can keep growing. Slow worms have a movable tail which makes up between a half and two thirds of their entire body length. This tail will break off in your hand if you try to catch a slow worm. Slow worms prefer shaded areas and slightly moist ground, but can be found in sunny places if there is cover nearby. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on the slow worm. 
Back to you, Stinky and Jake.